Like the chapter, these capacity planning questions are a mixture of qualitative and quantitative. Let's look. A production facility has a okay design capacity of 200 units a day, an effective capacity of 190 units. All right, which of the following are potential determinants of its effective capacity, accounting for the gap between 200 and 190? Okay, this question is sort of interesting in that it looks like it's a quantitative question because it quotes you some numbers, the 200 and the 190. Actually, it's more of a conceptual question because it's asking for the effectiveness of determin the determinants of effective capacity, which are the reason that you only get 190 units out of something that's designed for 200. We just have to test each one of these things separately. The need for periodic maintenance of the equipment of the facility. I'm going to tag that as true because that could be a very real reason why you only generally get 190 out of something that's designed for 200. The actual output of the facility. That is a distractor. This has nothing to do with what it's actually doing right now. Lunch breaks and coffee breaks taken during a typical day at the facility. That is also another stereotypical determinant of effective capacity. All right, so the top and the bottom tested true. We're looking for one and three. There we go, right there. That is partial credit, and that is partial credit. Now, let's look at the next one. Oh, the next one is quantitative. The Krispy Kreme Donut Production Facility consists of now notice this, three identical donut production lines, each of which operated at 80% efficiency last week. If the facility produced a total of 30,000 donuts last week, what is the apparent effective capacity of, and notice that this is underlined before I ever got to it, one of Kitty Cream's donut production lines. Okay, so with this question to tackle it, what are we looking to calculate? We're looking to calculate the effective capacity. Okay, that's odd. Usually we use that number to calculate something else. Yeah, like efficiency, which we're given. So we need the expression for efficiency because that is what? Output over effective capacity? Right? And what we're saying here is, okay, actually we know what the efficiency is. It is 80%, so that has got to equal 0.8. Well, I'm actually looking for this number here, output. Oh, wait a minute, output, they did quote, produced a total of 30,000 donuts last week. So you might have put a 30,000 in here and solved this, thought you got an answer, and then it didn't square with what I quoted as the answer. And that has to do with why was this underlined? It said that they had three identical donut production lines. Their combined output was 30,000. We're looking for the effective capacity of one of those lines. That line must have been producing 30,000 divided by three, 10,000 donuts, right? Each line's producing the same amount. That means that this number here is 10,000. 30,000 divided by 3. Now we solve for effective capacity, and that's where we get the answer. The effective capacity was apparently 12,500, right? Uh, essentially take the 10,000 and divide it by 0.8. Just solve algebraically for that. Okay, now the third, oh, the third question is easy. We're going back to qualitative. Costs that continue to be incurred even if, and that's the key right there, no units in produced by facility are called probably been in a dozen classes that you've taken fixed costs, costs you have to pay regardless of whether you did anything with what you were paying for or not. All right, that one's answered. All right, what have we got next? Okay, next we have three questions related to a scenario. Let's look at the scenario. The scenario says Medic Clinic is considering purchasing a new blood analysis machine for $60,000. Okay, a big purchase? I'm going to make a little note to myself. Fixed cost, $60,000. Because the purchase of big ticket items is a classic fixed cost in a lot of break even analysis type scenarios. All right, anyway. Next sentence. Medic Clinic can charge, Medic Clinic can charge, can charge $25 for each blood sample analyzed. That is revenue. 
because that's what they collect. While the actual cost of the blood analysis is only $5, that is a classic variable cost. The new blood and the new machine has a design capacity of 6,000. Okay, that's interesting. It's kind of like the donut thing earlier. And an effective capacity of 5,000. Okay, they even told us the next three questions concern Medic Clinic. Well, I will underline those. I'm sure we're going to need them for something. Let's see, what are the questions? How many blood analyses will have to be performed in order for Medic Clinic to break even? Perfect. The quantity to break even is the fixed cost divided by revenue minus variable cost. And I already collected these numbers. So it's what? Let me just scribble here. 60,000 divided by 25 minus 5 or 60,000 uh, divided by 20. Oh, that's where we get the answer C. 3,000. Okay, next question. Suppose Medic Clinic expects to perform 4,500 blood analyses next year if it buys the new machine. What would be the utilization of the machine? Okay, utilization is, let me think, output over design capacity, right? That's the formula. And, oh, wait a minute, and design capacity, they said that up here, design has a, has a design capacity of 6,000. So I've got that part of it. Okay, I'm just lacking the output, no, except that's what I was told right here. Expects to perform, that's the output right there that they're proposing, they think, for next year. So that goes in the numerator, and that's where we get expected utilization of 75%. Now let's look at this last question. How many blood analyses would have would Medic Clinic have to perform each year in order to use the new machine to be 80% efficient? Or their use of the new machine, excuse me, to be 80% efficient. Okay, this is similar. It's actually a little simpler than the donut situation because it's that same expression, right? Output over effective capacity. That is efficiency if I can spell efficiency, right? Well, we looked at that earlier. That's what was going on with the donuts. Now, funny, same target efficiency, 0.8. And wait a minute, effective capacity. This time, that was that other thing that was quoted up here. Effective capacity of 5,000. Okay. So I'm just looking for that right there. That's the only thing that's missing and sure enough that's actually what they're asking. How many would they have to perform? What would the output have to be? Oh, so now I just have to solve for x. So if I said 5,000 times 0.8 that would yield 4,000 and then that would be the answer to that question. <laughs>